from all of us here at Keen Investigations. We hope you're having a great day. There is nothing new to the concept of using some type of device to shield oneself from an enemy's attack. Indeed, the word shield refers to a device one would hold in front of oneself to protect against the enemy's sword or other weapon. Armor itself first came to be used in the form of an item of clothing in the Middle Ages, when knights would wear either rigid hinged armor or more flexible chainmail type armor. The development of firearms made these early types of armor obsolete. But in the 1500s, solid metal armor designed to withstand firearms started to appear. With one of the first recorded instances being in 1538 when the Italian Duke of Arbino commissioned a bulletproof vest from an armor in Milan, possibly made of Damascus steel. But he was poisoned and died shortly thereafter. Then in 1642, during the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell's cavalry was equipped with double-layered metal breastplates that were designed to be bulletproof. One of the most infamous uses of armor in history occurred in Australia in 1880, when four outlaws known as the Ned Kelly Gang fashioned their own body armor out of plow blades. They concealed their armor under long coats, and in a shootout with police, their armor was repeatedly hit but never penetrated. The armor comprised of a helmet, vest, and an apron, with additional protection for the shoulders and weighed almost 100 pounds but the majority of each gang member's arms and legs were unprotected, and it was repeated shots to these unprotected parts of their bodies that finally stopped them. Different countries and armies continued to experiment with solid protective garments, and by World War I, the U.S. was equipping some of its soldiers with a combination of breastplates and headpieces known as the Brewer Body Shield. This device, made from chrome nickel steel, could protect against rifle bullets, but weighed almost 40 pounds. Initial attempts at developing something one could more comfortably wear and still be protected against bullets and be lighter and more flexible than solid metal revolved around using natural substances, primarily woven silk. This silk armor was first used by the Japanese in medieval Japan. Improvements to firearm technologies and the increasing speed of bullets more than kept up with the improvements to silk-type armor. And the cost of such garments were also extremely high making them impractical for all but the most wealthy individuals. During the late 1920s and early 1930s, gangsters in the U.S. started wearing vests, made from multiple layers of cotton padding, cloth, and silk. It is said that they spent more than $800 on each one. At that time, a new car was about $825. These vests worked quite well against the low-powered handgun rounds commonly used at the time and resulted in the FBI changing to more powerful pistol rounds, first the 38 Special, and then the 357 Magnum. Flexible body armor first approached something like mainstream use in World War II, with bulky flak jackets being adopted and made out of nylon. Unfortunately, these were not only cumbersome to wear, they were also of limited value, providing some protection against shrapnel, but no real effective protection against rifle or even pistol bullets. Things finally started to change in the 1960s, with the development of new artificial fibers that could be used to create more effective, less bulky, and lighter weight garments. These new fibers were termed aramids, and first started to appear in the early 1960s. DuPont's Nomex was the first, developed in the early 1960s and first marketed in 1967. Perhaps the best known aramid is DuPont's Kevlar, developed in 1965 and first commercially used as a replacement for steel in racing tires in the early 1970s. Intensive research in the first half of the 1970s saw Kevlar adapted to be used in the manufacture of a totally new type of wearable and even concealable ballistic vest. With a report from the NIJ, National Institute of Justice, in 1976 concluding that Kevlar-based body armor was sufficiently practical and effective to be beneficial for police officers to adopt. Kevlar has made modern body armor possible, and although its fiber is now 40 plus years old, it still remains the most dominant used material and vest designed to protect against pistol bullets supplemented with solid steel or ceramic plates to give greater protection against rifle rounds when necessary. Kevlar has had several upgrades. The original Kevlar was superseded by Kevlar 29, which was the first version used for production models of bulletproof vests in the 1970s, which in turn was superseded by Kevlar 129 in 1988, a product DuPont referred to as the second generation of Kevlar fiber. 
In 1995, Kevlar Correctional was introduced, which added some stabbing-resistant capabilities. Prison officers are more at risk of being stabbed by inmates with makeshift spiked weapons than they are of being shot. And then Kevlar Pro Terra came out in 1996. There have been no new enhanced Kevlar products since then. By the early 2000s, simply using present technologies, more than 80 different manufacturers offer NIJ certified body armor. Most current flexible bulletproof vests are woven fabric. An interesting alternate approach has been taken by a California company, Pinnacle Armor. They have created a flexible vest which comprises about 150 2 inch wide ceramic discs, each individually mounted on a vest carrier and all overlapping each other so to provide an overall solid barrier, but with flexibility for easy wearing and movement. This new concept, called Dragon Skin Armor, is still in the testing phase. The continued enhancements to fibers has resulted in bulletproof vests that are lighter and less bulky than their predecessors. They are not necessarily any stronger or more bullet resistant, but for the same amount of resistance they are definitely lighter and easier to wear. In the past, improvements often came by the way of making fibers thinner and the weave tighter. But the extra cost of this becomes greater and greater, and now is at a point where continued reduction in fiber size is not cost effective with present technologies. Some manufacturers are now looking into three-dimensional weaving as a new way to make stronger, lighter garments. New technologies and new materials are needed. Some are on the horizon. A new fiber called M5 seems promising, but is not yet in commercial production. Carbon fibers produced from carbon nanotubes are also being developed. Another interesting technology is a sheer thickening substance that is normally flexible, but which thickens up when experiencing sudden strong forces. Crimes and wars have been around for centuries, and human beings have always used some sort of body armor to keep themselves protected in such scenarios. Thanks to the technological developments in this field and the advancements in the manufacturing process, human lives can be protected better. The history of bulletproof vests is interesting and fascinating and gives a clear idea about the future of such products, and it only looks like it's getting more high-tech. What crime-fighting tools would you like to see the evolution of? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to shoot that like button. Don't worry, it's wearing a vest. And please share the video with friends. It really helps the channel. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. We upload this series every Saturday afternoon, and it also really helps the channel. Keen Investigation is now on Patreon. We are trying to upgrade to the Adobe platform. This will cost $50 a month. The video and audio programs we are using now are very hard to work with. We really don't like asking, but YouTube is very hard when you first start. And we're not making a penny on these videos, but enjoy making them very much. If you would like to help us improve the quality, even a dollar a month would really help and is greatly appreciated. The link for the Patreon page is listed below. Thank you for all your support. We look forward to seeing you all in the comments, and as always, have a great day.